Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Right now, food that's so good, they claim it would make a rabbit smack a bear. We're putting that claim to test today on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harned. And today we're cooking Cajun classics with a big Kentucky kick. A little bourbon barrel Worcestershire sauce. How about New Orleans style barbecue shrimp? Plus catfish with Puvion sauce. We'll find out what that is and the secrets to making it at home. And you've heard of Catcher in the Rye. I'll show you the secrets to my Manhattan in the Rye. It's a classic made for sipping. All that and much more right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again for another edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs in front of a live studio audience. And Tim, there's reason they're so excited today. They're going to have a chance to take a taste of some of the best Cajun classic Kentucky food that we have to offer. Oh, that sounds good. This is really good. Here's what you can expect. Our special guest today is the chef from Cuvillon in Louisville's Germantown neighborhood. It's a genuine southern restaurant that fuses Kentucky ingredients with Cajun culture. The menu offers everything from crawfish etouffee to local andouille sausage, cornbread that's as good as it gets. Served in cast iron with cane syrup butter. Mmm, that is so good. You'll love their fried Brussels sprouts with Kentucky Proud grits or a pair of pork chops with dirty rice. And then there's the duck creole in cast iron with those handmade ricotta dumplings. You've had those before, Tim. So I can't wait to see how the audience likes it and how we enjoy making it before their eyes. Absolutely, I can't wait. So without further ado, let's bring him out. From Cuvion, Chef Paul Schoolers. Hey there. Hello. How are you guys? doing? How are you, man? Good. All right. How are y'all? Good. Thanks uh, for having you. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Good to have you. By the way, I, I talked about uh, the food's so good, it'll make a rabbit smack a bear. Now, what's that all about? <laughs> so one of my business partners' grandfather grew up saying that, and we just we, he kept using it when we were recipe testing, so we figured it would be a great tagline for the restaurant. It was painted on the wall. Yes, sir. <laughs> it <laughs> was. We were just there not long ago. Beautiful place, awesome food. We had so much fun. We did. And it was delicious. And by the way, beautiful bar there, too. You're doing some signature cocktails that are incredible. They're yes, awesome. You know what? I checked out the bar, Kevin. I noticed you know. that. Right. I did. <laughs> Always we, check that out first. For but. sure. And we've got a great audience here that's very hungry. What are you going to make for them today? Uh, first off, we're going to make New Orleans style barbecue shrimp, which is nothing to do with actual, like, the, the sweet, sticky barbecue sauce. It's more of a Wisher white wine based sauce. And then we're, we're going to make a catfish cuvia on the namesake of the restaurant. Do Excellent. you want to talk about what that means? Yeah, the cuvia. So, cuvia comes from the French word uh, court bouillon which kind of goes back to in the 1700s, uh, the Acadians were settled in Nova Scotia and the French kind of pushed them down and they traveled all the way down the country to Louisiana and the, their, the term uh, Acadians slowly transformed into Cajun and a lot of the words from the old French dialect became slang. Court bouillon slowly transformed into cuvillon. So Interesting. Interesting. And Spring. you've added some Kentucky proud twist to uh, oh, these uh, traditional Cajun menus as well. Absolutely. We try to buy as much local as we can from the Kentucky, Indiana area. This catfish is right out of western Kentucky, out of Lake Barkley. Wow. Yep. Wild Excellent. caught. I was curious if you were going to say lake or Ohio River. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you said the lake. So, <laughs> definitely pass. Anyway. Where do we start, Chef? Well, I'm going to get the pan going. All right. A little tab of butter. A yeah, good amount of garlic. I like that. You put a little bit of oil in there and a little butter and garlic. Uh, that's not just a little. <laughs> kind yeah, of helps, that uh, was a little. <laughs> <laughs> helps the, the butter from burning, so it kind of increases the smoke point. Boy, and already you can just smell the aromatic of that uh, garlic and butter coming together. We'll get you going. Oh, it smells good. Nice. It doesn't take long to melt. And this on is fire. a special you have on the restaurant. Uh, can you get it most of the time? Uh, well, this is a this is the shell on version. At, during dinner service, we offer a shelled, the mushroom and grit version. This oh, is more okay. like the appetizer version. So All I have right. the the shell in Gulf <laughs> uh, shrimp sautéing with the garlic. Smell that now. So this is real Gulf shrimp. Yes, sir. All we get is Gulf shrimp. And we buy, try to buy local, but you know you just can't beat Gulf shrimp. Smart, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna deep, we're gonna deep glaze with a little white wine. Mm. Stand back, Tim. Right. I don't want you to catch on fire again. Oh, but it's it real. smells so good. Oh. That little bourbon barrel Worcestershire sauce. 
nice. And we're just going to a little flavor. Yes, sir. I always describe uh, Worcestershire as like a salty fermented pickle. So, you sounds, know, sounds a little you weird. You know how I describe it? As an ingredient in a Bloody Mary. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw in a few slices of lemon. Speaking of pickled. <laughs> I'm just going to let that reduce by half. Oh. Mm. There's a lot of flavor in there. Yes, sir. I'm going to throw a little bit of our uh, black pepper Creole seasoning. So at the restaurant, we use three parts black pepper to one part uh, Creole seasoning. Oh, wow. Kind of like a lot of the food just tends to pair. It's like rich and fatty. Uh, Acidic, so black pepper kind of cuts through and rounds out the southern flavors. And that's easy to do at home because you can buy the Creole seasoning already uh, made for you. So oh, you, absolutely. They have all the ingredients you want in there and just add a little black pepper and you're done. My wife and I always keep a Paul Padron's black and red fish seasoning oh, in the yeah. house. That was a classic. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I think I have a little Old Bay if you need it. Oh, yeah? No. This is, this is Cajun. That, you're, well, whatever. Uh, it's just what I put on no. fish or something, okay. right? Here's, I don't know the difference, Tim. Here's the Northeast, Old Bay. <laughs> We're down in Cajun country. Kevin, get well, they your, don't, they don't get use your, Old Bay down get there? Get your map out. Got we, it. we got a little Cajun coming down, 100% uh, chance. <laughs> I can do that, too. <laughs> it's easy. Isn't it? Almost as easy as this. <laughs> Shaking and stirred. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, we got to oh, get back to cooking. Show. Oh, it's a cooking uh, show. All right. So, yeah. chef, uh, we'll throw about a quarter pound of butter. Uh, <laughs> real light. <laughs> you know. Now it just got good. Oh, that's about four tablespoons to every shrimp. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. the ratio on this uh, dish. I'm just going to wait to reduce it a little bit more, add the scallions, and we'll be ready to go. Beautiful. Beautiful. They're coming together. And I like the way you added the lemon. You didn't just do a squeeze of lemon. You actually added two wheels yes, that sir. were in there. And it's cooking down, so all those flavors are coming up without overpowering it. Then we'll be plating this with the uh, Leidenheimer Bakery uh, French bread, which is right out of New Orleans that we get shipped to us. Oh, you do? So you get that shipped in for you? Yeah, it. it's been a part of the New Orleans culture since uh, 1903 when German immigrants came and set up the bakery. Excellent. So, yeah. You can see it's getting, it's almost it's there. It's thickening up. It's yeah. coming together. And the purpose of the lemon, because I thought that was an interesting just, combination with the uh, Worcestershire sauce. Just a little bit of acidity to cut through the pound of butter I just put in it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Might need another wheel in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. You drank this. <laughs> oh, that does look like go. something to, oh. That just, you got, got your next Bloody Mary right here? Right there. Oh, that would be a great <laughs> seat to think about. Tim, Tim just needs a straw. He'll be walking around with a pan and a straw. <laughs> Okay, I need a bottle of Finlandia, quick, stat. <laughs> and we're just going to plate up in a little cast iron or bowl or where we can kind of sop up the juices for you. Oh, and I like that presentation too. Yeah, we fancy. Oh, that. oh, nice. And then a little bit more scallions because, you yeah, know, green makes it good. And what's nice is I can tell you didn't overcook the shrimp. They're cooked to perfection. And see, the importance of this is you sop up all that. You don't Absolutely. leave any of that sauce in the pan, mm. right? Yeah. Yep. Wow, that looks great, Chef. That's it? That is unbelievable. Wow. How do you like that? <laughs> looks fantastic. Well, they can't wait to take a taste, but we have more treats to share coming up. You've got more secrets. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you the namesake of the restaurant, Catfish Cuvion. All right. Catfish Cuvion. Hey, don't you want to catch that one? <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. You're, not, you're mixing up something, too, Tim. You're headed to the bar, is that right? Oh, imagine that. Tim's going oh, to the Old Forester Bar. I'm heading back to the Old Forester Bar to, uh, to make up a Manhattan in the Rye. Oh, we'll take a look at that when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. With support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. And by Kentucky One Health, bringing wellness, healing, and hope to all. Hi, everybody. Glad to be with you again on another edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, we're cooking with Paul Skoulis, and it's all about Cuvillon. He's just made this incredible New Orleans barbecue shrimp, and coming up, he'll show us the secrets to his signature catfish cuvillon. But first, it's time to check in with buddy Tim Laird. You know where to find him. He's back at the old Forester Bar. Tim. Hey, you'll want to catch this cocktail. 
It's not a catcher in the rye, but a Manhattan in the rye, and here's what's in it. One and a half ounces Woodford rye whiskey, a half ounce of sweet vermouth, and just a dash of bitters. Here's how we put it together. Starting out with my Woodford rye. Goes into a stirring glass with ice. Then, a little sweet vermouth. Dash of bitters. Give this a good stir to chill it down nicely. I think the rye adds a nice little uh, dimension to this classic Manhattan recipe. Then, strain into a cocktail glass. Finally, top off with a nice cocktail cherry. And there it is, Manhattan in the rye. Cheers. All right, how about that? Tim with the applause from the audience. Hey, don't go away. We've got more cooking when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Paul Skoulis from Cuvillon is making that signature catfish. Cuvillon when we come back. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Tim, everybody loved that cocktail. It looks so easy. It's delicious. I'll tell you what, I, I tried it again before uh, we got back from commercial break. <laughs> yeah. It was good. I, I don't doubt that. You're just right. mad I didn't save you well, Yeah, I mean, you hoard it all back there at the <laughs> bar, and we're up here working, cooking. You know how it is. It's not easy up here. It's not. It's We've got, luckily, the expert, uh, Paul Skoulis, is here. Thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. You made the first dish. Everybody enjoyed that, uh, the beautiful barbecue shrimp, and now we're uh, switching gears here and going to a little catfish. Yes, sir. Uh, wild caught catfish out of Lake Barkley, Kentucky. <gasps> that sounds good. Yeah. My family loves to fish and do everything outdoors and fillet up a, you know, a, a, not any kind of fish really, but catfish and then a lot of times they'll deep fry it. But this looks great. I can't wait to see the secrets. Yes, sir. And Same. signature dish uh, at the restaurant too. Yep, the namesake of the restaurant. So we start with a hot, hot pan. Yep, just when it just starts smoking. And we have uh, salt and our same black pepper Creole seasoned mm. catfish kind of laying away from yourself. Some people are intimidated by cooking fish. Uh, that's why I like, I like cooking catfish, because it can handle some good amount of abuse. <laughs> that's Kevin with his weather report. <laughs> right. You want to hear my voice, Mel? <laughs> yeah, you want to hear abuse. <laughs> Our family picnic was today, Kevin, and it rained. Huh? So we do this during service, we uh, start from raw, and it's essentially we're braising the catfish instead of just deep frying or just grilling. So we sear it on one side, we're going to flip it over and deblaze the pan with our cubian sauce, which is a tomato-based uh, dark roux sauce. Which Ooh. The roux is kind of the fundamental backbone of the Cajun Creole mm. cooking. And we take flour and uh, fat and keep cooking, keep cooking until it's almost uh, chocolate colored. That gives a lot of depth to the sauce. And then this also has the trinity, the bell pepper, the celery, the onion. Traditional. And then yep. they call it the Pope's nose, garlic in there. And we just cook that all down for about two hours. Wow. So wow. that takes a lot of time, but a lot of flavor goes in. And I like this secret, too, is where you put that in that hot oil and just leave it there because now you're going to get a nice crust. Yes, sir. And you want that little beautiful crust on a catfish a like this. textural difference. Yeah. Right? I'm going to drop the pan down low. Um, and that's an actual fish spatula. That's yes, what they sir. call that. Yes. This one is uh, 10 years old. I got this at culinary Oh, school. look at this. <laughs> Speaking of taking abuse, wow. look at this baby. Yeah. Works, the, you can go to the dine company and get a new one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> nice Christmas gift there. Yeah. yeah, I think if anybody wants, you can get a chef a new fish spatula. It's just broken in. <laughs> yeah. So then we deep glaze with our cubian sauce. Oh, see, mm. that's that rich goodness, oh. delicious, that looks just, oh, phenomenal. So the Cuvillon sauce is in. Tell us once again what's in that. So we start with the, the dark brew, then we add Trinity and the Pope's nose. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Sounds that's like that'd be easy to find. You know, if, if you were listening earlier, that's garlic. Garlic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, uh, we add our ground tomatoes, uh, white wine, and just cook that all down for a few hours. 
Okay, so that has to cook for just a little bit. We're yes, going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we will finish up the catfish cuvillon right Ooh. here with Paul Skoulas. We're coming back on Secrets of Bluegrass Shop. <laughs> Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud with support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. And by Kentucky One Health, bringing wellness, healing, and hope to all. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Kevin Harned, Tim Laird. This obviously hasn't been cooking for hours like it may in the restaurant, but uh, we're rolling right along with the catfish cuvillon. And also, Chef, you're telling me you have uh, two styles of catfish, too. Yes, sir. We're kind of obsessed with the Kentucky catfish that we get, so we're also offering a fried catfish jambalaya now on the oh. menu. Oh. That sounds delicious. Boy, talk about decisions, decisions. Yeah. Well, that's the way it was when we were in. Remember, we were like, we'll just take one of them. Uh, one of each. Everything. And then we shared them. That was good. Yeah. That's the beautiful part. You can't, we did. We passed it around the whole table. Everybody just sort of shared. Except I didn't share my cocktail. <laughs> no, that's never happened. No, and it never will, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next step? Uh, we're just going to wait for this to finish up. Okay. Just a couple more seconds, and so, we'll be there. Did you nice. see that thermometer he used? Yeah, yeah. he just like plops his hand <laughs> yeah. in. He pretty much doesn't need a spatula or a thermometer for this. Right. Like a, uh, I love that spatula. <laughs> Trustworthy. Now, how did, okay, now, was there any damage to your hand when it just curdled up? <laughs> no. You, I mean, usually it takes 500 degrees to melt this, but look at this thing. How did, I let a lot of the other cooks use it, and sometimes they, <laughs> they leave. <laughs> oh, see, yeah. That's like the good chefs, though. They don't share their knives, and you shouldn't sh share your sh the fish spatula. I've, I've asked to borrow Tim's shaker before. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It, it's like a holster on his side. He's like, <laughs> yeah, goes right back in. It's like, no way. He, he refuses. <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> Hands off my shaker. <laughs> well, I'm ready to... <laughs> Ah, uh, there's a new shaker in town. <laughs> Gold. Okay. And back to the cooking show. Okay, and back to the cooking It's hard to keep this car on the road. So, the catfish. Or, or train on the track. <laughs> that too. Catfish is all cooked now, so we're oh, going to plate it. And just some more cast iron. Nice. Can't get enough of it. Just kind of stacking it. Is that a normal order? Uh, well, this is a normal order, yes. So it's about okay. a, a fish and a half because we get uh, varying sizes because it's kind of wild caught Kentucky catfish, so right. we can't really get an exact uh, measured amount, so we kind of just kind of yeah. puzzle it all together. Nice. That's a Pour a little amount. bit of the sauce all over. The Cuvillon sauce. Yes, sir. And then I have my massively oversized rice cooker. Oh, yes, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just uh, steamed white rice. And then... If you're looking for the authentic stuff, they always use jasmine rice. Right. Yeah. And here we are, and more sprinkles. Beautiful. Can't, can't get enough of it. That. And there you are. How about so that? Beautiful. The catfish cuvillon. Wow. Wow is right. Did you hear that? I did. What are your hours so we want to come out and see you? So we're open every day but Tuesday. Okay. Uh, we do dinner Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we're open all day Saturday and Sunday for brunch and dinner. And our full menu's available all day. All day and brunch. Yes, sir. Excellent. On Saturdays and Sundays? Yes, sir. Wow. Easy to find right there in Germantown. You bet. Thank you for being here. We Thanks appreciate you sharing those secrets. Thanks, Chef. Yeah. Really Thank appreciate you very much. Thank nice you. job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. We hope you'll stick around for more secrets on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We have so many we share every week. Well, we're going to take a goodbye for now, but when we come back the next time, we'll have more to share from some of the best chefs across the Commonwealth. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harned. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud 